Hi everyone, I'm Hales and welcome to my channel. Question one today is, what is your name? So I am Hales, I'm actually Haley. Haley is on my birth certificate, but growing up, a lot of people would call me Hales. My brother still call me Hales, my dad would still call me Hales sometimes, and so I go by either name, but for ease of being able to find my channel, I thought I'd just call the channel Hales rather than Haley. I go by either name, it's fine. Question two is where are you from? I live in Suffolk, which is the, in the east of England. We get quite good weather here over in the east, but it is very flat. So Suffolk is sort of known for not really having many hills. And so you can't really see for miles because the fields, it's quite a rural area. And we have really big fields, corn fields, but it means you don't have like a nice scenic view where you can look down from the top of a hill, which is what I actually like, but this is where I am. Very flat, but quite good weather. Question three is how long have you been sewing? I have been sewing since I was a little girl, but it was hand sewing. And so back then, I may used to make soft toys and sew them by hand and I'd bring them into school from kits mainly and I'd take them into school and show the teacher of like show and tell. My mum would show me how to use her sewing machine. My mum mainly did patchwork then. She did do sewing years ago, but she never showed me how to do it and back then there just wasn't a thing really. So because of like lack of fabric shops and that kind of thing, I've made I've, I'll put, I've found some old photos and so I'll put them in. So one of my first ever dress, which is the Lizette pattern, and I've picked the wrong size, it was way too big. I put a belt on it, it was too short, the neck was all off, but I was really proud of myself, but I never actually wore it anywhere because I didn't realize it was actually quite badly fitted. But I then did go on to do a few other bits and pieces and I then started to make some um, dresses for my daughter when she was really small and wanted to wear dresses. And so by doing children's patterns I could then um, make a dress and it, there wasn't too much in terms of like fitting issues, you could just like make up the size and then that was it. Question four, what are your machines? So I will show you. First up is my main machine, which is the Brother. You don't want to see me, you want to see the machine. This is the Brother Inverse F420. I bought this, so this flips up and you have your stitches here. I usually sew with it down actually. Let me just pop you up a bit so I'm... I usually sew, so we've got all the stitches and things here. The bobbin is really easy to thread. Actually, the whole machine is really easy to thread. I usually sew with it down though, for some reason, don't know why. I bought this during lock, during the first lockdown, I think it was April 2020, so we'd gone into lockdown in March, and then it was either, it was either the end of April, early May. My, other, my previous machine, which is the Silver 1045, which was really good, and it was my first computerized machine, it just died to death, and because of lockdown, there was nowhere I could take it to get it fixed because we weren't allowed to travel out anywhere. And I just knew that I'd be a bit sad if I couldn't do any sewing and we were stuck at home. So my husband said, look, just go and buy a new machine. So I found this one through a local shop and they were selling an X demonstration model and so there was a hundred pounds off. I actually have an extension table which goes with this as well, which she threw in for free. And so I bought this one without seeing it, without trying it out. She, I paid for it over the phone. She delivered it to my front door and that was it. Um, the trouble with buying something unseen is that it does a lot more than what I think it can do and so I haven't fully learned, I'm not one for just sitting there reading the manual, so I haven't fully got to grips with it yet even though I have been using it for a year. So one of the features that I wanted which I didn't have on my old machine was the thread cutter because I thought it would just speed things up so it's really good actually for you finish sewing, press a button, it cuts a thread instead of having to lift the foot up pull it out, get the scissors and then snip off. So it's a really good function. This has a needle threader. My other one had one, but I broke it within the first week of having it. So I had it for like that machine for like seven years and then I always had to just thread the needle myself manually. But this one, and I almost broke it on this one as well because I, was, I had it set for zigzag and then went to put the thread through the needle, forgetting that it was set for zigzag and um, something made an awful noise. It does still work, but I did worry that I'd broke it. So that is that one. My overlocker, let's move you across. Oh, 
Oh, and this is the knee lift. When I bought the machine, it didn't. The, she had the box in the shop next door to her, which had the knee lift in. And then I had to wait like six, seven months after I bought it. And then I did get it. I've only used it a few times actually, but it's good for like slippery fabrics and things. If you wanna like go around the curve and you don't want to like let go, then that comes into hand. Now this one, this is my overlocker, which is the Jaguar Ep Eplock 055D. Now what I didn't realize about this, because this one I bought second hand from a shop which is about an hour's drive away. And I think I bought it in 2013 Having never used an overlocker before, not knowing anything about overlockers, I still don't really know much about overlockers because I've never done one of those. I know there's lots of online courses and things you can do, but I don't want someone to like show me in real life. So I've never really figured it out, but I kind of have. It's not, okay, I have a couple of issues with it. Let me get in close. Right, I've zoomed out. You will have to excuse, this is just reels of tracing paper. I haven't tidied up. Now, I didn't realise, but someone said the Jaguars are so easy to thread up because they open up. Now, this has a habit of the screw comes undone, so I do need to tighten that up because it's not lifting up the, it's not lifting up the foot. But I didn't realise that a lot of these, a lot of overlockers don't do this. So you just thread up like this and you can get in there. The trickiest bit I have about threading is literally just getting, um, sometimes the foot gets in the way of when I wanna put the thread through the actual needle. But other than that, I mean, I could probably take the foot off. Other than that, it's fine. The, I did have a slight problem with the foot in that the pin which goes through the foot, so the, there's a pin and then you clamp down and that's what lifts the foot up and down. The pin broke and so I couldn't get the foot on. So my husband ordered a little rod, broke it and then wedged it in. So at some point it will give way and then it will break again. And so I don't know what I'd go for next time, but I've heard good reviews that the Jaguar is really easy to thread compared to a lot of machines and it came with this. I bought it second hand and it cost me about, I think it was 139 pounds. I have one more machine to show you and it's under here. This is my Singer 201K, I absolutely love it. I bought this off eBay, I think 2019. With postage it cost me, I think it was around 70 pounds and I think half of that was actually the postage and I'm surprised it actually turned up in one piece. It was serviced but like 10 years ago or something so it really does need me to get it serviced because it doesn't like saying things like viscose. If I try and sew it, the thread will just pull straight out of there so there's something going on with tension and um, I did have problems with the bobbins, but that's because then the machine, when I bought it, came with the wrong style of bobbin and they weren't winding on properly. So once that was resolved, I still had that issue with the tension, but I did make a denim jacket on it and did the top stitching on it as well as the construction last year. And I have made, actually last year, I also made a wool coat, my butterick coat, in, on this machine and it, it sews like an absolute dream. When it's thick fabrics, I've also done canvas fabrics as well. And it sews really fast, faster than my computerized machine. And it has such a lovely even stitch. It is only a straight stitch. So I still need my digital machine for my zigzag, for doing, um, you know, it has the thread cutter and the needle threader and the sort of gadget bits that you want if you want to change position, the needle position, things like that, which you can't get because this literally does, it's good for one thing, but what? It, but that one thing, it is really does really well. So I do really like it. It has this that um, pops up and down. Let me just move that around. So this, um, so it pops up, so it takes up less room and you can lean on that. Obviously put your fabrics on there. You have got the seam allowances marked on here as well. They are all in, um, well it does just has numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So all I do is if I have a tape measure and I measure what my seam allowance needs to be, then I know which one to line up with. And it has a little compartment over here to put the to put the threads and things in, which is really handy. And yeah, you just oil it in certain places. I do need to use it because I haven't used it in nearly a year, so I don't want it to seize up, but it's really good. So if you find one, get one. Is my advice. Question five is, are you self-taught or have you had formal lessons? 
in 2012 I signed up for dressmaking classes. It was a six week course for absolute beginners. We were told to pick out an A-line skirt pattern and take it along to the class. There were about five of us on the course and this is the one I picked because indie patterns weren't really a thing back then and so I just literally just went into the shop I think and bought what this which is Butterick 5712 and I opted for this one and then I was just going to cut it and I made it into a navy knee length skirt. I learned a lot about fit in that class, about sway back adjustments, about getting the seam lines down the middle of your body, like down at the side. If things are moving forward and you add more to the back. I learned so much from that sewing teacher but and we made muslins and everything but because we were all making different patterns by week six I hadn't finished entirely finished my skirt so I did have to finish it off at home. The lady who ran the course then said that she was doing another one for a blouse making course later on that year. Again it was only a six weeks course unfortunately only me and one other person actually signed up so we went to the teacher's house and I took along new look 6407 you'll have to excuse the state of the envelope and this is the one I chose because I thought it's just kind of like a straight cuff so it wouldn't have um, lots of fiddly bits and I made it but again the teacher did all the fitting so I went there she would tell me what I need, where I needed a fit if I needed to do full bust adjustment I would just literally she would tell me what to sew I would sew it and if I needed to do something at home ready for the next week she would email and say oh can you do this and this and she'd write make notes and I would just like literally sew those two lines of sewing and then take it back the next week so by week six I hadn't quite finished it I had to finish it again finish it off at home and I didn't necessarily learn much about fitting and construction myself because although I was doing it she was like the brains behind the operation so from there oh and I will put a picture in this is what happens I never delete hardly ever delete emails so I still have an email from 2012 in my inbox but I will put a photo in here I look slightly different because it was a little while ago then had that that glow of youth about me but that I made that blouse I actually wore it to the job interview that I'm in still to this day so that was the blouse making course i read lots of blogs and back then blogs were a big thing youtube wasn't really a big thing certainly not for sewing and things and so i just absorbed all the information because people would write up about construction and patterns they were making and i it was trial and error with them and different fabrics and everything so i just learn from there really. In 2015 I offered to make my friend a, dr a dress for her brother's wedding. We went to a local fabric shop and we picked out a new look pattern and the fabrics which went with that and I will come on to her, I'll slightly touch on that in another question but we did that. I was really proud of myself for having so I really stepped out of my comfort zone and it had like a lace overlay which was my idea so I interlined the lace I'd never done any of this thing before and I think because I was doing it for someone else I wanted to put extra effort in for fitting I would make it slightly different if I was doing it now but it was quite an achievement to have done that I used to make dresses for my daughter when you're making them for young children you don't have to worry about fit so they are a lot easier to make and back then the patterns were mainly for wovens. You don't have all the indies which, with all the options of all the nice jersey patterns for children. So that's what I just went with, but it, it was really good knowledge which has then helped me in my experience over the years to improve on my dressmaking. Question six, knits or wovens? Well, I made this t-shirt this week and I've also cut out this olive needle cord to go with this. So this is going to be a skirt and obviously this is the top to go with it. So knits for speediness for quickness for making t-shirts for easy to fit things but still woven for the fitted because although the skirt I'm making isn't going to be a terribly fitted skirt I get more satisfaction out of making woven garments but sometimes I do need just quick things like a nice sweatshirt or a t-shirt because I need that in my wardrobe and it is a bit of a palette cleanser particularly if you've been working on a tricky project. Question seven is big four or indie? Let me show you. This is my drawer, let me point you down. This is my big four big four collection now they are just literally just shoved in here there are a couple of rogue deer and doe indie patterns in here but the rest if you can see is all big four 
Now, because I learned on big four patterns, this is what I went with. And I have made a lot of these, but there are a lot of patterns where, you know, I haven't made that one. You know, I bought that randomly. Don't think I'm ever gonna make that. Did make this, and I did make a video with a ruffle top but it, it wasn't necessarily my style. So there's a lot of in here that I've bought and never made up. Oh, here we go. Classic, classic blazer. I bought it and then I realized that there is, you see that? There is gathering at the back of the blazer. So you have to make it like a crepe or something. This is one of the first things that I made actually, which is Vogue pattern. And it has a long zip all the way down the back and I found it really uncomfortable. Um, oh, look, they're the Birder style trousers. Now, they are the ones that I, were, I was working on last month, which are the petite ones. But, and I do, you know, things like that. This one is an indie, actually, which is the Colette Mabel skirt. When I was learning to sew, Colette were, obviously they're now seam work, but Colette patterns were like the big indie one, which were then emerging and everyone was making them. So yeah, so I do have a lot and, I'm afraid a lot of the big four are not pattern, I'm not a big pattern repeater. This is quite a good pattern though. Um, the Simplicity 8014 and it's had really good reviews on places like Pattern Review. But I will show you where I keep, so I used to keep my indies in there as well, but because I print them off, I have them in here. And this is like the drawer of shame because they're just terrible the way that I keep them. So basically, if you can see, point you right down. So basically it's just here. It's just a load, absolutely loads of manila envelopes with the occasional printed one. What's this? The Nina Lee Q dress. I made that by cut it too small. So I don't think I can repeat that one. Um, I actually, there's a few indies which are snuck in here as well, but it's, it's my project book. Mainly, see, this is the Summer Dreaming e-book of like, the patterns they released last year, and I treated myself and paid for printing for all of the patterns, which is quite expensive, but I have used them quite a lot. I also just shoved my overlocker cones in here as well. So, I was big four, Oh, that's completely on the wrong. So I was big four, but I think I'm definitely indie now. There is the occasional big four, but the price has gone up loads. And so net, whereas they used to have half price sales, and so indies seem quite expensive. Big fours, they're about 10 pounds pattern and they never put them on half price. And so, and so I have had a few fitting issues with weird excess ease and things. Although they do have good coat, Butterick have good coat patterns. I am tending to go towards indie though. I th think at the moment, although I don't want to say, oh yes, I'm definitely pro indie because some indies are quite iffy. So obviously when I made the Deer and Doe Akaju trousers, they were complete disasters. So not all indie patterns are great, but I do like the ease of being able to print out a pattern at 10 p.m., printing it out at home, and then just sticking it together and then I've got it. I'm good to go, I can even make it. I made the Mood Patterns um, Felicia sweater one evening, printed it out, cut it out, sewed it all up in one evening, and I wouldn't have been able to do that on a Saturday night. I would have to normally wait, um, you know, for shops to be open or wait for a pattern to arrive. So I like the instantness of, is that a word, um, of indie patterns and the fact that a lot of people are making them so you can compare and see what's about. But I'm not, com I am still open to both, but I, have what and based on what I've bought most lately, I'm um, indie. Question eight online shopping or in store? I do have a store which is about 20 minutes drive, like cross, cross country from me, but I haven't been there for a couple of years. Obviously, they were closed throughout last year, as far as I know. They don't even have a Facebook page, so there's no online presence for them. So I wasn't able to then purchase them. But when I bought my friend's, like the fabric for my friend's brother's wedding, we went there, we were able to find like a satiny fabric and some lace and they weren't even next to each other in the shop and just paired them up and they were complete match. We wouldn't have necessarily had to do that online. We would have had to order samples. 
So being able to just see the fabrics in person, I really like that, but that really is the main one. There is a, another shop fairly near me, but it's mainly quilting, cottons, and things like that, not necessarily for, it doesn't have the range of dressmaking fabrics. So I would say, certainly the way I shop now is online for fabrics, but I do still like in-person for notions. But since I bought my Gutterman thread card, that has enabled me to then match up threads so I can then order online for those. And um, I have started to buy more fabric from Beyond the Pink Door as she has a YouTube live. So it's almost like in store because she's showing you the fabrics and you can see how they go well with other fabrics. And so I like that. I think sometimes if you just see a fabric on a screen, I have some coating fabric, for example, that I bought with some Christmas money and I bought four or five meters of it because it was on like a 20% sale with a limited time so I didn't have time to get a sample. When it arrived it wasn't as bright as what I thought it would be from what it was on screen. So you know it was fine but I think had I seen it in real life I probably wouldn't have purchased it. Question nine, favorite sewing task has to be the actual sewing, definitely, all the way. Question 10 is what is your advice to other sewists? And I would just say if you're a new sewist to make a variety of different things. Don't be scared by sewing stretch fabrics. It just means there's less fitting to do. Um, do the neck band into quarters rather than following notches from the instructions like they would tell you, forget that. Divide the neck band into four and divide the neck hole into four and then just match up those, I use clips, match up those clips to those points on there and your neck bands will go in so much easier. And I would also say to baste your neck band in on the sewing machine before launching straight in on your serger or overlocker. That's just a tip. You probably know that already anyway. I like to make a variety of different items so that I can learn more things and increase my knowledge and just have variety in my wardrobe and be brave with colour. And I think following other people on Instagram and seeing what suits their body and if you have a similar body shape as well, seeing what looks good on someone or similar colouring to yourself, then that might suit them, that might suit you. And I think that's a really good inspiration. And I certainly wouldn't have bought, let alone worn something bright pink two years ago. So I, I'm still learning all the time as well. And I hope um, if you're out there, wherever you are watching this, that you're encouraged by myself and other people to sew, to discuss patterns and things. My husband just glazes over when I talk to him about sewing, so I'm like, okay, I'll save it for the channel. That's easier that way. There is a bonus question, which is how do you find out about Friday sews? Jen, obviously from today in Jen's sewing room, started up Friday sews. She messaged me and said, you're gonna do Friday sews? Come on, I think you should. I just didn't think I had time. I just think I had anything to say because I think being in lockdown for so long had made me really demotivated and I barely, um, you know, I think last year I uploaded once a month to my channel and that was it really. And she was like, come on. And so I, I said, okay, I'm gonna join in. I said, that should be a hashtag, you know, that would be, that sounds like, you know, Friday so So obviously I'm taking full credit, not really, for Friday so <laughs> Jen's idea. But yeah, so um, it has motivated me to make things and to film things. And yeah, it's really good, really good for mental health, I think, um, doing sewing and chatting with people online when you can't chat with people in person who share the same hobby. So I really appreciate everyone who comments every week as well and have a bit of a giggle at some of the things. And I think you, I really appreciate everybody who likes and who has subscribed to my channel over the years or whether it's recently. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching today and I will see you again soon.